another trail. Oh, Dallas, your cork is down. Here, give me the GoPro. Real, real, real. There you go. He's got one on too. Oh, another trail. Another small one. It's a baby. There we go. A little, little double header trout action. Oh, we're coming in hot. Both too small. We're going to go ahead and let him go. What's up, guys? Captain Charles right now down here in Isla Mirada. I got my girlfriend Caroline on the boat. My best friend Dallas behind the camera. Today we're going to go back in the Everglades National Park, do some trout fishing. It's my day off. I got a string of charters coming up. We're going to go out, catch some trout, put them in the cooler, come back, cut them up, and do a little uh, cook video later for you guys. It's one of my first YouTube videos, so welcome to the channel. If you haven't already, go ahead and click that subscribe button. Right now we're going to head over to the pen, grab a scoop of pilchards, and get on out there. We got about a 30 minute ride, uh, but we're going to be hauling, so hopefully we can cut that time in half. Stay tuned, guys. Alright guys, we're over, we're over here at the pen. I got this pen in the water. I try to keep as much bait as is impossible. Being a charter captain, all my trips are bait fishing trips. Me and my buddy Dallas loaded this thing up yesterday while the bait fishing was good. Today we're just going on a quick trip, so we're just going to grab a scoop out and get out of here. I keep a lock on it, that way any sticky fingers can keep their greasy hands out of here. I've also got it set up nicely with this PVC for the lock bungee cord to hold the lid up so it doesn't fall down and break the lock and then I got this great light post arm up here with a pulley system on it these bait pens can get really really heavy and they can be a pain in the butt to do it by yourself so all I do is just go ahead and hoist it up get it a little bit out of the water makes bait a lot easier to scoop out there's a lot of bait in there so I'm not gonna bring it all the way up go ahead and put it down as you can see, we have a bunch of nice pilchards in here. Like I said, I'm just going to take a scoop. We probably put about a thousand in there yesterday. These will live pretty good. I've got five days of charter coming up. This is great emergency fun in case it's supposed to be really, really windy out. If it's too windy and I don't want to go catch bait, I can always come over here and scoop it. I will probably look for bait every day, but I know in the back of my head I have all this emergency bait. This is almost like a savings account. Nice razors. How many we got in there, Dallas? 15, 20? Uh, a couple dozen. Yeah, that's all we need. That's all we need for bi primarily. We're gonna be using artificials today, but it's always a good idea to have live bait on the boat. So we got bait. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and head out there. So stay tuned when we get out there. We're gonna be covering a lot of stuff, tips and techniques, how we rig up our lines, what I pretty much do on every day that I go trout fishing. So stay tuned, we'll be out there in a minute. All right, guys, so we're leaving the bait pen. We're going to run out there. Uh, looking at the flag on top of Worldwide Sportsman, it looks like it's blowing pretty hard out of the east. So the one thing about being down here in Isla Mirada is we can pretty much hide from the wind for the most part, a.k.a. pretty much hugging flats. There's long flats that run almost from Isla Mirada all the way to Flamingo. So we're going to be on either the lee side of those flats. You'll feel the wind, but at least we won't be in all the wave action. Uh, looking at the flags before we leave is something that I do every day just kind of map out my direction There's a few main routes that all the guides use to get back there uh, Looking at the flag is a good determination like okay I'm gonna run on this side of the flat this flat all the way out there that way it makes a nice ride So let's go ahead and hit it Thank you. 
guys, we made it here. Conditions look great. We're gonna go over some basic rigging techniques that I use every day while trout fishing. Uh, we're gonna go how I rig stuff up, techniques on how to work the corks, and uh, of course, how to throw a fish in the cooler. Let's get it done. All right guys, so we're out here at the spot. As you can see, there's a couple people already out here probably doing the same thing we're doing. This is one of my go-to spots for trout fishing. Anytime I get clients that are saying, Yes, we'd like to catch as much fish as possible for dinner, for a couple nights, take home back to, you know, Wisconsin. Um, anytime that I get clients that want to catch fish, we come out here and do some trout fishing, some mangrove snapper fishing. I do a lot of snook and red fishing. I have a strict no, no, uh, no keep policy on the snook and red fish on my charters. So anytime I get clients that want to catch fish to take home to eat, we come out here, do some trout fishing, do some snapper fishing. This is the go-to trout rig right here. It's made by Betts Tackle. It's a popping cork. Um, they call them click clackers. It's weighted. Um, this right here will attract the trout. When it, the popping noise is what gets them to come up and investigate what's going on. It almost makes them mad. So we're gonna be giving a hard pop, letting it sit. Trout will come and investigate, and that's when they'll go ahead and pick up on this. This is a halo shrimp, also made by Betts. We're gonna go ahead and tie this behind the popping cork. We're gonna pop that cork. Trout will come investigate it. He'll see or smell this. This is a scented halo shrimp, and then he's gonna go ahead and tack. I'm gonna drive that hook in, break his neck, and reel him on in. So we're gonna what we're gonna do is go ahead and cover some basic how I rigged this up. Right here we got my normal rig, which I use in the backcountry. It's already got some 30-pound fluorocarbon on it. I like to leave that fluorocarbon on just so it makes easy unrigging if I need if I want to go ahead and switch it. I got my boomerang tool clips here. These things are amazing. I just leave them hooked up right here. This is almost like my rigging station. Go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and get, take this off. So now what we have is just pretty much some 30 pound fluorocarbon, not much of it with a uni knot tied to my braid, 15 pound braid. I'm going to go ahead and open up this package. So you got your popping cork right here. It slides up and down. You got the weighted part on this side. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach my main land line to this side right here. All I'm gonna do is just go ahead and loop it through and do a quick uni knot. We'll be covering knots later, but this is just the basic knot that I use. Very quick and efficient. I love this knot. I do tie all my knots like this. Just like that, go ahead and slide it down. Boom, done. Clip the tag in. So now we got a pop and cork attached. On the other end is trout fishing is dirty out here. Fluorocarbon is expensive. So all I'm gonna use is just some basic mono. This is some 20 pound mono. Take a little bit off. Clip it. I've got about a foot and a half here. That's plenty of line. That will give enough room for that halo shrimp to sink. Same thing, tied on the weighted end. You're gonna want the weighted end to be closest to your actual bait. Uni knot real quick couple times over not gonna leave much of a tag that way I don't lose much line here a little bit harder to tie when there's not much of a tag go ahead and cinch it down pull it on tight like that clip off the tag not much waste there like I said it's a little bit harder to tie when you don't leave yourself much of a tag but that way you're also not wasting a bunch of line go ahead and break into my halo shrimp they make these things in a bunch of different colors we're gonna start with this color and see how it works Scent is always a great thing to have out here whenever you're trout fishing. Nice halo shrimp, got a nice sharp hook, a little bit weighted so it'll help it sink. Same thing, uni knot. I'm gonna come up from the bottom this time though. Tie a simple uni knot. Again, I'm not gonna leave myself much of a tag to eliminate waste. Just a few times over. Go ahead and bring it tight clip off the tag and now she's ready to roll. So that right there is your standard trout rig that we use down here in the Florida Keys in Everglades National Park. If you look right at the cork, you'll see when I give it a pop, you want water to spray. Let it sit for a second, reel up the slack, let water spray. You want a nice big pop. That's what's gonna go ahead and irritate the trout and draw them in. Reel it back up, always throw downwind. You wanna throw this thing as far as possible every time, give it a nice big Can't get some trout on the line. We're gonna get Caroline working. Stay tuned. Got some trout coming up for you. So Dallas just got cut off by a big shark. 
He was popping in, big explosion. Left him with nothing. So we're gonna go ahead and tie up another halo shrimp. That's just something that happens while we're out here. We got Caroline back here. She's working the cork. See if we can't get her a trout. We got the Takizi shirt on from Dennis Friel. He does all our artwork and all our printing and shirts. Check him out, connectedbywater.com. Uh, let's get Dallas tied back up and get him back out there fishing. We got a bite, it was a shark. Cut him off, stole our nice halo shrimp. It happens, we're gonna get him tied back up and get him out there. All right, Dallas is hooked up right now. It looks like a big trout broke surface. I got the dip net ready to go. Oh yeah, nice trout coming in. Got it on the halo shrimp. As you can hear, it's pretty windy out here, but we've been drifting for about 10 minutes now. First trout, oh yeah. Look at that, nice trout right there. Go ahead and hold him up, Dallas. Nice big trout. Look at that. That right there, Everglades National Park trout caught on the Betts Halo Shrimp on the Betts Popping Cork. Like I said, we've only been fishing for about 10 minutes. We're gonna go ahead and measure this guy. There's a, there's a slot for these fish. They have to be over 15 inches and under 20 inches. You're allowed four per person. You're only allowed one over 20 inches. Being a guide and growing up down here, I do my best to conserve the population. So anything over 20 inches, although you're allowed to keep one, if it's over 20, we always let them go. Check out this nice trout, guys. Look at that beauty. That's a stud right there, boys. Very nice. All right, let's go ahead and measure him, Dallas. We'll bring him back here. We've already got the bump board out right now, so we're gonna measure him, make sure he's legal. If he's over 15 and under 20, we're gonna go ahead and throw him in the cooler. We got the bump board back here. This is one of the best things to make sure you're always accurate. Go ahead and slide his nose all the way to the plate and bring it on back. We'll go ahead and pinch his tail and it looks like we are right at just over 19. So that one, guys, is gonna go ahead and go in the cooler and we're gonna cook it up. That's gonna be some great dinner tonight. Trout are absolutely delicious. We brought our fish cooler today. I always love bringing a cooler just designated for fish. We're gonna open it up. Throw them on in there, Dallas. Look at that. That is a nice trout, guys. Throw the bag over him. All right, we've only been fishing for 10 minutes, but we got one in the cooler. Caroline's still back here popping away. She's had a few bites, one big kitty cat, no trout so far. We got a few more trout to go before we can go ahead and head in and cook them up. Stay tuned, we got some more fish coming. There we go, guys. Come here. Slimy, 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 slimy. Nice speckled trout. Same spot, Have we have not moved. We've been anchored down in the same spot. It's almost every cast now. We're gonna see if we can't throw a few in the box. I might even try to get one on video of one of them eating here. We're pretty much popping it and just letting it sit. We're working super slow right now and it is working really good. Look how pretty that fish is. He absolutely inhaled that halo shrimp. Look how far down that halo shrimp is. We have not had one short bite yet on that halo shrimp. Look at that, love it. Beautiful fish, great eating. Let's throw them in the box. Dallas just got a bite right at the back of the boat. Oh, look at that. There you go, nice trail. Should be a keeper. Beautiful. All right, guys, and with that, we're done. We pretty much came out here with one goal, show you guys how to catch trout on pop and cork. We're way out here, probably about 30 miles from home. We've got about five trout in the box. We're gonna go ahead and pack it up and haul ass back to the dock. <laughs> Caught what we wanted for dinner. Dallas is gonna go ahead and make a brine. Pretty much a brine is just salt water and ice mixed in. We got a bag of ice in there. Dallas just added a little bit of salt water. That will really help get the temperature of the cooler way down. Make sure these fish are nice and frozen before we get home. The colder they are, the easier they are to cut. Salt brine is something a lot of us use. Like I said, we're done fishing for the day, so we brined it down. Now we're going home. All right, guys, so we're on our way home. We happened to pass down this, pass by this really big blowdown. Um, had a few friends call us for dinner. Um, we got enough trout for us to get the video done, but passing by some awesome structures, some normally some big mangroves that hang out. So we're gonna see if we toss a few pilchards in. You know, we only brought a scoop or two with us. We're gonna see if we toss a few pilchards in if we can't pull out a big mangrove snapper. So stay tuned, hopefully we'll pull out a jumbo. Oh, yeah. It's a 
a big one. Big one. There we go. Got him out. Got him out. Oh, that's a monster. He's still trying to get back. Oh my god, Carol. Get, 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 get the net. Get the net. Get the net. Get the net, Carol. Monster, monster mangrove. He's covered in grass. Look how big this guy is. Holy crap. Woo! My professional netter. She did amazing. There we go. High five, baby. Look at that, guys. Monster mangrove snapper in the Everglades. This thing is an absolute giant. He tried to get me into the sticks. Got him out. I don't even got to measure him. He's huge. This is exactly what we want. If we can get one more like this, I mean, we're talking about eating good. That is a textbook mangrove snapper right there. Let's give him a measure anyways. We're going to Let's go ahead and give him a measure anyways. Caraman's got a great idea. Dallas coming up with the idea. Watch his teeth. They call them snappers for a reason. Make a grown man scream. Let's get a look at those teeth. Hold on. Nasty teeth. All right, let's go ahead and give him a measure. He's bigger than a cooler. Look at that. He is over 15 inches. He's probably 16 and a half, 17 inches. That is a stud mangrove. Oh, he's going crazy. Then the briny goes. definitely more than a keeper snapper I would let him go right now but we got hooked him so we're gonna go he's not gonna live so since he is big enough we are gonna throw him in the box all right Dallas is up let's see what he can do I am the master of snapper try to get him out fast Oh, oh, he, oh, he's still on. Oh, he's caught now. Oh, that was a big one. He's got me in the tree. He's still. All right, guys. So now we're actually heading back to the marina. I know I said we were leaving after trout fishing, but my number one problem with fishing is actually going home. Always one more spot, one more fish. Dallas pulled off a nice grouper. I pulled out a monster snapper. Caroline got a snapper. Caroline is out right now. So much for a fishing buddy. She is completely passed out. The bubby ride will wake her up. She works all night as a nurse. She got home. She just couldn't resist coming fishing. She was up for a little bit, and then she crashed pretty hard. Nap pretty good. I wish I could nap like that on a boat. But anyway, so we're heading back to Buddy Mary's Marina. We're going to clean up these fish for you, and then we're going to cook them later. So stay tuned, guys. Alright guys, so we're pulling back in the Bud and Mary's Marina, the home of Takizi Charters where I keep my boat. If you guys like what you saw today, go ahead and make sure you click that subscribe button. Also, I'm still working on a name for what I'm going to call this YouTube channel. If you got any suggestions, feel free to go ahead and comment below. Right now I'm thinking Takizi Fishing, considering Takizi Charters is my charter name. Um, we're going to go ahead and cut these fish up for you guys cook them later for you but other than that if you guys have been watching i really appreciate you guys joining into my first ever youtube video it's gonna get better as we go i can promise you that you know the first video so so 100 video amazing listen if you're not putting out content you're becoming irrelevant i'm a little late on the draw but i have a lot of you guys to catch up to nick blue game i'm coming for you guys watch out all right stay tuned guys we're gonna go ahead and cut these fish up for you all right, guys, we made it back to Bud and Mary's Marina. We're going to go ahead and get ready to clean up these fish. We got them in the brine. If you go ahead and take a look at them, nice and cold in there. Look at the size of that one mangrove compared to the other. We're here at the fish cleaning station. I got my Betts tackle knife, German steel, the Billy Bay style. 
First snapper, that's two inches legal, and look at this monster. Wait for it. Oh my god, look at that thing. He is a absolute stud. That's a seven inch knife right there. That is a stud mangrove. We're gonna go ahead and cut these up as well as the trail. Check this out, we're gonna go ahead and show you guys how to fish up. Down. As I was growing up, I used to look for rentals in a paper cup. And now that I am getting older, I know they meant well when they said I told you. But there are always variations. There is no limit to creation. Holler if you feel me when I say that I'm finally on my way. And I don't need another day. I know that I can make it. I can make it. All the days were happy tears I cry Blue is the color of my best friend's eyes Blue is the color of my dreams When I wake up nothing's ever as it seems That's the good stuff. Alright guys, so we just got home. Got a bag full of fish. We're going to put it in the fridge for now. First things first, even though we've had a long day, got to find the dog, play with the dog. You're going to meet him in a minute. His name is Boone. Put that in there right now. Caroline's gonna be pissed because it's gonna get the fridge all dirty, but oh well. All right, let's go find the dog. Let's play with him for a little bit and then we're gonna go ahead and cook this up later for you. We heard some noise. I think I found them. Actually, I found all of them. Friends eyes, blue is the color of my dreams. When I wake up, nothing ever as it seems. Blue on the days where all the tears I cry. Blue is the color of my best friend's eyes. Blue is the color of my dreams. When I wake up, nothing ever as it seems. Blue on the days where